Hello students. Today in Paleontology, we are going to study application of paleontology in coal and oil exploration. So since we are talking about coal, so we have to talk about fossil fuels. So we have three types of general types of fossil fuels. What are these? Coal, crude oil, natural gas, solid, liquid and gas. Now let us start with coal. What is coal? Coal is a combustible hydrocarbon form after fossilization. It is a non-renewable source of energy being used since time immemorial formed at groundwater level. Continuing with coal, now we would like to uh, talk about formation. How does formation of coal takes place? It is formed as a result of two processes, peatification and coalification. Now let us talk about peatification also called biochemical coalification. What is it? It involves the microbial and chemical changes of the vegetable matter. See, vegetable matter, the trees, the plants, all vegetable matter that falls uh, and starts decomposing. It gets uh, uh, accumulated uh, layer upon layer and dense material so formed is called peat which is acted upon by fungi and bacteria. This partial decomposition of plant material is called peatification. And this material which is formed as a result of this partial decomposition is called peat. It results in the release of many degraded products, especially humic substances and methane gas. Formation of humus is called humification. That is a part of peatification. And you have humification is promoted with oxygen supply, increased peat temperature and alkaline environments. So in this figure you can see here the peat. Peat will, under pressure, under uh, with the passage of time, will go certain changes and will have a formation of lignite and ultimately the coal. Peatification being the first process in uh, coal formation is followed by coalification. It's the geologic process of formation. It takes millions of years for coal formation. Partially decomposed material, what we call peat, which got formed, under pressure and further temperature forms lignite coal. Lignite over a period of time under pressure forms bituminous coal. And bituminous coal formed so formed under pressure over a period of time gets converted into anthracite coal. The coal so formed is called fossil fuel and a hydrocarbon because its composition is C, H, N, O and S and other minerals. So it is formed as a result of fossilization. You know coal has been uh, economically very important. Why? Because it has been used since time immemorial for generation and production of steam, for generation of energy and other, uh, other things. This mineral occurs at depths and has to be excavated or mined. So we have got coal mines, especially in Bihar, you must be knowing it. So to find out the exact location is a must and we should also know the thickness of the coal seam. How much of coal can be extracted whether the resource is there or not. Usually it is made by boring and it requires a lot of labor, a lot of money is spent. So in order to avoid that nowadays what we are doing we are using the paleontological studies which have helped um, in, in during past few years. Not only paleontological studies, we also use paleobotany. So with the help of paleobotanical and paleontological studies, coal properties of various levels and regions can be determined, which are helpful in solving problems of excavation. You know, paleontological studies help to ascertain the age, lateral extent and quality of coal deposits. Spores, pollens in the fine sediments of coal deposits bear a variety of shapes, sizes and organization. I told you earlier also the pollen grains never get degraded. So we, we have the, these pollen grains. We can find out the age of that particular plant, what particular type of plants were growing that time. Even if it's, it's, it has got fossilized because sporopollen in the outer covering is very thick. It, it, it generally doesn't get degraded. With the help of this data, along with quantitative data, uh, we, it gives us, it helps us in demarcating coal layers and seams in coal fields. This work is engineered at present at Birbal Sani Institute of Paleobotany in Lucknow. Children, it's for you, CTM, commit to memory. Please remember it. 
coal formation. Dead plant matter submerged in swamp environment subjected to the geological forces of heat and pressure over hundreds of millions of years. It has taken so many years for coal formation. That's why we say it's non-renewable source of energy. Basic two processes for formation of coal are peatification and coalification. There are four stages in coal formation. And what are these? Peat, the first process by, by bacterial mostly decomposition and some fungi. Uh, the peat formation takes place where humification also takes place. Peatification is also followed by uh, humification. And then the formation of lignite takes place. Peat gets converted under pressure, uh, geological timings. It gets converted into lignite. Lignite under pressure and over a period of time gets converted into bituminous or coal. And this bituminous coal under pressure with passage of time gets converted into anthracite. So that is the fourth. So these are the four stages in coal formation. Children, it's for you the pictures I have taken from Google Images. So you can see here the peat, how what is happening to the peat, how peat formation is taking place. The vegetable matter is getting converted into a burial. It's getting buried layer after layer, layer after layer, layer after layer, and ultimately under pressure, heat and time. It's required, but burial pressure, heat and time. And what is happening? Peat is getting converted into lignite. What is peat? Peat is the uh, decomposed material which got uh, accumulated layer after layer and it got converted into lignite under burial pressure and heat in time because heat is generated as a result of microbial decomposition and ultimately it gets converted into bituminous coal and then into anthracite so here you can see this is uh, peat this is lignite this is uh, bituminous coal and this is your anthracite and here are the four stages you can see here one after the other we finished with the coal. Now we talk about the crude oil and the gaseous part, the natural gas. Crude oil is petroleum. It consists of an extremely complex mixture of many different kinds of hydrocarbons. Natural gas consists of hydrocarbons, not condensable. You cannot make it into liquid. It's gaseous form at atmospheric temperatures and atmospheric pressure. If natural gas only methane is compressed, it is referred to as dry gas. We compress it. Now we put it in cylinders only. Those cylinders are available. Cooking cylinders. And then if the mixture of ethane and methane, ethane content exceeds 5%, it is referred to as wet gas. Crude oil and its byproducts which serve as a source of fuel are known to be formed millions of years ago. But we take uh, crude oil. This crude oil actually are, is refined. The first and purest form of crude oil is aviation spirit, which is used for running aeroplanes. That's the fuel for aeroplanes. The second part is that which is utilized for running of automobiles. The third part is diesel, which is also used for running automobiles. Some of the automobiles run on diesel, which is a source of fuel. And the, the after refining, whatever remains there, it is called uh, kerosene which is available for uh, usage. Some people still are uh, getting kerosene and subsidy and all that. So that is kerosene. And if whatever is remaining there, that is called the wax. And out of the wax, we make candles and different products of wax. Now, uh, when we are talking about uh, crude oil, where do we require the knowledge of paleontology? Paleontological information is utilized. Paleontological information utilized in exploration of oil, which is achieved in a number of steps. And what are these steps? Occurrence of index species helps in geological dating. See, we make a chart of the list of the uh, plant material, whichever, because we get the pollen and all that. With that only, we can just, on the basis of the pollen, with the help of the pollen morphology and all that, we can just classify plants into various groups. So we make an index of that species as we have the indicator species, we have the index. Uh, species we, we have an index of that so that is called those are called index species if we find that in particular particular area that gives us the idea about the geological dating whether it was in uh, jurassic triassic whatever period it was there drifting of wells and comparisons of assemblages can be uh, uh, can be uh, explored with the help of paleontological information 
Paleo ecological and paleo geographical information obtained from micro fossils help in search for locations of oil deposits area. areas. It is known that sediments parallel to seashores are rich in oil. That's why we are the Bombay High. References I have used Bhattacharya, uh, textbook of paleontology, New Central Book Agency, Private Limited London. Last but not least, a big thank you to all my students for patiently listening. Please like it, share it and subscribe. Thank you.